Guys, the day is finally here. It's time to kick off the Longhorns 2020 football season. And here at KVU, we wanted to get you ready for kickoff with our digital pregame show. Over the next few minutes, myself, Jeff Jones, along with my friends Emily John Greco and Jake Garcia, will get you ready for the Longhorn season by showing you a few sound bites, many of which you did not see on TV, that will give us a little more insight into what to expect from the Longhorns this season. So let's go ahead and get things started with the team's most popular player, quarterback Sam Ellinger. Sam is entering his senior season and has learned a new offense under first-year UT coordinator Mike Yersich. You can expect this new O to feature more run-pass option plays, and something I'm going to keep my eye on is how fast this offense moves. The players and coaches tell us this Texas team will try to get from one play to another in a hurry. You're probably going to see us maybe go a little bit faster as a norm throughout the course of a game. I think it'd be very easy for um, a new guy to come in after me being here three years and um, maybe take, take his foot off the gas, but he has not done that at all, and I really appreciate that. It is fast. I mean, I'm talking, like, I'm getting mad. Not, and I can't get mad, but it's like, boom, play's over with. I got to hurry up, get the car, and then going. Like, I'm like, and how is it this possible to go this fast? As a guy who played linebacker in high school and college, I can tell you that those fast-paced offenses are a huge, huge advantage and not very fun to defend. Now that you know what to expect from the Longhorns offense this year, what should you expect from the team? Is a Big 12 championship realistic? Well, they sure think so. My friend Emily John Greco joins us now to take a look at the team's leadership and expectations entering this season. Hey, Emily. Jeff, the Longhorns have a lot riding on this season, and it's going to be interesting to see how they handle all of that pressure. First, you have the additions of Chris Ash and Mike Yersich. Then you're making up for last season. You have starting quarterback saying that you're back, and then you're not playing to what they like to call the Texas standard. Also, speaking of quarterback, Sam Ellinger has yet to win a Big 12 championship. Can he do it this year, and does he feel the pressure to do it? Well, his teammates say that he doesn't, and even if they don't win the Big 12 championship this year, it doesn't speak to what Sam has done at this university. He's not thinking of it as, oh, I need this under my belt to 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 um to to stamp my legacy or to signify that I've I've to be remembered forever he's doing it from a standpoint of we work so hard why not what is the reason why why not win a championship we work this hard we wake up every day from at, from 6 to whenever we wake up and we're here all day, we're working hard, we're grinding, we're here, you're here with your brothers, so why not try to win every game? Ultimately, that's the goal everybody wants, to win a national championship. That speaks volumes about Sam Ellinger. And, you know, not only are they facing all of those hurdles, but they're also playing football during a global pandemic. So we're going to see how this season pans out for the Longhorns. Let's check in with Jake Garcia. We've heard two storylines about the offense, so let's now transition to the defense. This group gave Longhorns fans some headaches a year ago. A leaky secondary and a non-impactful front pretty much boxed Tom Herman into a corner, a position to where he had to reassign or let go of much of the defensive staff. So out with Todd Orlando, in with Chris Ash. Ash, the former head coach at Rutgers. He didn't officially start at Texas until after the bowl game, but we got a look at one of the most important changes he'll be making this year in that bowl game. Joseph Osai making the move from outside linebacker to a hybrid position called Jack. It's where he played in the Alamo Bowl, and it's where he realized how much it fits his skill set. It's built for me to be more aggressive, and that's what that's what um, Ash and Jaws have been preaching, really be more aggressive on the, on the Jack side and, and, and come off the ball and, and attack. The difference I, I'm able to see is that it's, it's simpler, but it's not predictable. You know, it's simpler because it allows the guys to play freely and just go out there and be athletes like they are. It allows the safeties to roam. It allows the linebackers to run freely without thinking. And that's, that's I think, I, th I think that's important when you have your players just go out there and play and have fun. Osai had three sacks and six tackles for loss, all of them coming from the jack spot in Texas's blowout win over Utah. Of course, we're all really excited to see what he does in a full season at this new position. Jeff, we'll now send it back to you. 
Well, there you have it. Between Emily, Jake, and I, we broke down what to expect on offense, on defense, and how that strong Longhorns leadership will look this year. Now the only thing left to do is just grab yourself something to eat, something cold to drink, kick your feet up, and watch the game. Tonight at 10 on KVU, of course, we will have all the highlights and reaction you can handle. We'll see you then.